now our liaison. So do either of you have any updates for us? I do have one. Um, I would just alert council member, I mean, uh, commission members to an item that was on the council's February 2 agenda. It was really an informational item about our ongoing um, grants program. Uh, we, we have a systematic effort that's been ongoing for several years now, whereby first city staff identify uh, city needs. We then work uh, our, our managers with uh, a consultant uh, that we, we've hired uh, to target uh, whatever available funding sources are out there, federal, state, private, county, um, to, that where we try to identify uh, sources of funding that could meet those needs. Um, and we plan well ahead and put together a calendar so we make sure that any applications we put together are timely. Um, and then when, of course, when we land those grants uh, and we've landed $25 million of them in recent years, of course, we let you know about that but we also track the ones where we fail to uh, obtain uh, grant funding and do whatever we can working with the grant makers to uh, politely uh, discern from them, what was it about the city's application that fell short? How could we have done better for future competitions for these funding sources? Because many of them are sort of ongoing or annual uh, sources of funding. Um, so uh, the, the, there's a very good staff report that, that explains the different kinds of things that the city is actively going after now in, in the continued cycle um, uh, and uh, some explanation of you know, where we did fall short, why, why we missed uh, and how this process works. There's another um, uh, presentation coming forward to council probably on February 16th where uh, the council uh, will adopt uh, its, its legislative platform. Uh, council member Ferks and I constitute the subcommittee uh, that, that works on this issue. And you'll see when we come forward with uh, that platform that a number of the, the items we're pursuing are really at the heart of it about uh, uh, improving the city's fiscal situation. Um, and, and some of those things will seem familiar to you that have discussed issues, these issues around here before. In the short term, very definitely, we're focused on trying to get state and, and federal COVID aid to help offset the very large revenue loss that we've suffered. Uh, but there's other longer term items there and, and that we'll be continuing to pursue. Um, but the odds are very strong. We'll, we'll, that, that matter will be handled on February 16th. That's all I've got. Thank you. Anything from council member Chapman? Yes, please, yeah. So uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Josh Chapman. Um, just wanna take a second to introduce myself. Um, I, am, I am the newest member of the city council representing district five and Davis as a whole, obviously, but I want to um, introduce myself this evening and thank you for um, the work that you do on this commission. It's a hugely important commission. Um, and it's a lot of time, but um, one that is extremely important um, with the guidance and advice that flows up to council. So I, I appreciate and thank each and every one of you and, and want to emphasize um, uh, Chair Neville's comments around, you know, potential commission members. And if there are folks in your orbit in which you think they could be a good fit um, to please reach out uh, to them and, and, and help through the, the commission application process um, to get any feet, uh, seats that are open filled. So um, thank you for the work that you do and the work that's coming up with the budget review. I know that's going to be a big lift. Um, and I look forward to, uh, to working with this commission. Thank you. Uh, the only uh, brief announcement I have actually has to do with um, David Sandino's earlier question about the review of the proposed purchase of the fire uh, ladder truck. And the answer to that question is yes. Um, our liaison did work with city staff, city manager, and they do think that it would be valuable for this commission to do a review of that before council acts on it. I don't have the exact date by which the city staff analysis is going to be done yet, but I will keep in close contact with city staff. Um, if we're lucky, we'll get it before our March meeting and we can each take a look and bring our comments to that meeting. 
Um, if it doesn't come to us by then, then what we may need to do is designate. We might decide that it's more efficient to designate someone and maybe David, David you might be that person because that's your area of interest. If, if it comes to us after the March meeting and council needs some timely comments, maybe we would ask you to be that point person who would provide some feedback to city staff between our March and April meeting, but we just don't know the actual timing yet, but we are gonna take a look at it. That's, oh, David, please go ahead. So I'd be happy to do it. I also wonder if it would be appropriate to have a subcommittee, maybe that goes at the end of the agenda, but if there's others that wanna join in, we could, we could do it that way as well. Great, yeah, let's, that's a great idea. And let's, when we get to our long range calendar and we're kind of figuring out some tasks, if I, I'll make a note of that for myself. And if I don't remember, remind me, because we might wanna designate a couple people. So I'll do that. And just checking here, has, has Ray been able to get into the meeting yet? Or Ezra? Yes, I am in. Oh, great, hi Ray. So Ray, me I'm too. Gonna, Oh, fantastic, okay. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't see, I don't know why I'm not seeing you. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing them either. What? Oh, uh, I see Ray. Are you, both, are you both on the phone? And I do see Ezra. Okay, very good. So Ray and Ezra, um, just to record your votes, obviously you're here. I can record you for attendance. And can I record you as both as I votes on the um, agenda for this evening's meeting? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're good. And we've just done brief announcements and, and any other brief announcements from other commissioners? Not seeing any, very good. So we'll move on to general public comment. This is for comment for items not on our agenda this evening. And I received just one via email. Is there any other general public comment, Elena? I do not see any. Okay. So we received, and I believe it went to all of us, and I'm just going to read it. And I guess I, what I would ask too is if, if Kieran, if you can attach it after the fact to the um, agenda for this evening's meeting so that the other members of the public can see it. And this is a similar email to the one that we received uh, at our last meeting from Dave Terramino. And it reads, um, dear, it's actually addressed to us as well as to council members. And it says, I'm urging you to reject its reference to the fire, um, the, the fire truck with the ladder. I'm urging you to reject this proposed unnecessary and unwise expenditure. California and Davis are entering into one of the most serious fiscal deficit periods since the Great Depression. The election has overshadowed discussion of both the state's lack of funding and the resulting lack of funding available to cities. Davis's tax revenues are also threatened. Here is my reasoning for rejecting the request. One, there is no pressing need to buy this particular ladder truck and commit to more overhead in construction and yearly ongoing employee costs. First, there should be a fact-based report on why this truck is necessary for Davis and why now. Number two, UC Davis has a truck to meet the same needs and is fully staffed. Prudently, Davis should contract for emergency help and not duplicate available services that have yet to be needed or justified by some pressing danger to public safety. Three, what, where are the facts showing an ongoing unmet need for this particular ladder truck? Let supporters prove that a current problem exists and cannot be taken care of by using readily available UCD resources and staffing. Four, yes, city money is burning a hole in someone's pocket, quote unquote, but Davis is likely to need to quotes, temporarily borrow, end quote, from its set aside funds for real pressing needs, not an imaginary one. We may not have the financial resources to maintain normal fire services in the future without borrowing temporarily from these same dollars. Number five, 90% of fire calls are for health and accident emergencies and none for fires requiring a new, quote, super duper, end quote, ladder truck. And six, unnecessary expenses of this type are the type that the voters focus on when real fiscal funding is needed and overshadowed by wasteful spending. Very truly yours, Dave Termino. So that's, that is the only public comment. And next we move to our consent calendar and there are two items on our consent calendar tonight. Donna, just yes. a, 
Donna, a quick question. Um, I did not actually, I don't believe I remember receiving that particular couple yeah. of public comments. So if you don't mind forwarding it to all of us, that would be great. Yeah, I'm going to do that after the meeting because did other mem did other commissioners get it as well? It came around six o'clock. I got it. This okay. is Ezra. Yeah, so I think, and I will do that, Elena, and I'm realizing sometimes that um, we get these public comments at the last minute that come directly to us, but I'm not sure they always come to you as staff as well. Um, and maybe we can put that, do we have that on our agenda so that people know to email? Oh, we do. It's pretty clear. We do. Okay. Gotcha. I will forward it to you very shortly. Thank you. Um, next, our next item of business is our consent calendar, which has two items. Um, approval of the minutes from our last meeting, and then also our acceptance of a legal memorandum. And this is something that Kelly Stackwitz mentioned at our last meeting. Uh, the city attorney wrote a memo that is attached to your packet regarding due process and bias. So first of all, I'll just ask if there's any public comment on the consent calendar. We do not have anybody. Okay. Seeing none. Are there any corrections to the minutes from the prior meeting? So one of the only correction is that my name is missing on as an attendee. This is oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I put it in and okay, I sorry. I don't know how it didn't get put in there. No, it's okay. And then for just so it doesn't come back next month, we still have Mayor Partita on this month's agenda. So just as a FYI. Oh, yes, I, okay, gotcha. I, I saw that as well and I, I had corrected it, but I guess it just didn't happen. So, gotcha. Um, any other corrections to the minutes? No. And I'll just mention just for, um, because this is an issue that's come up several times in our meetings previously that in item, um, Sorry. Sorry, I'm just looking backwards here. Um, item an item six C. There's a, a rather lengthy summary of our discussion of the proposal related to major economic analysis. And I just mention it here because in prior meetings, we've had a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some discussion and, and members have asked for additional detail in the minutes. Is this the level of detail that you're seeking on these kinds of discussions or does this seem too detailed for you? And I ask that because writing minutes that are this detailed that that summarize virtually every point made in a, a discussion it's it's pretty staff intensive and it's pretty intensive on my part is this is this what people is this what you want or, or are you more comfortable with a higher level summary and uh, um donna just to let everybody know we do record these meetings so they are available for anyone to listen to if so so just to kind of as part of consideration. Gotcha. Absolutely. Any comments or thoughts? Donna, which item again are you talking about on so the uh, January 11 seven, minutes? It's 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 six C. The discussion related to our, this your subcommittee, you Ezra and and Gukern's, yeah. uh, subcommittee <clears throat> proposal. There's like three full paragraphs, two or three lengthy paragraphs that summarize the discussion. Normally that would have been one or two sentences. Right, I will say, and as a general rule, I, I like a more uh, succinct um, uh, summary in the uh, minutes. Oddly enough, this was one discussion that we had that I um, didn't quite remember all of the ins and outs of the discussion. and. And in this case, I, I do appreciate that level of detail. Um, so I guess that's somewhat of a ambivalent response to your to your request. Uh, it's actually similar to my my reaction is I'm a big fan of succinct minutes that really just describe what happened. But I think where we're having a, a detailed discussion with a number of points raised related to an ongoing project or proposal, 
sometimes there is room for a little more detail. I think it does help people's memories because it is hard to go back and watch the tape. So unless there's an objection, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of use some judgment here and where I see a real need for a little more detail, I'll try to put it in because I think it will be helpful to us on a particular project, but I, I'm not inclined to do it on every item. Not hearing any objections. David, go ahead, please. Well, I, I, uh, I noticed the additional detail before you mentioned it and I thought it was helpful, but I, I like the way, I, you know, I support where you landed. I, I leave it up to the discretion of you and staff and it would depend on the item and it would depend too on if the agenda is going to council or someone else to read. So uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with where you landed. Okay. Paul? Yeah, I like the additional detail. I think it's I know helpful. You've asked a lot in the past. Yeah, I, I I've thought in the past that we we haven't had quite enough detail. It was hard to know what what was even being discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think just keep working at it, and I'm happy as a member of the communications subcommittee to uh, on an ad hoc basis to look at minutes and. As, as they're developed and then make some comments on whether I think they're detailed enough. Okay. Uh, I think okay. some, sometimes I think we can be more concise, but yeah, um, you know, I like more detail. Okay, Ray? I prefer less detail. My thought is that we often take our own notes, participants may take their notes, staff might take their notes, et cetera, uh, that would serve their purpose. And so if you're really trying to get into the detail, you probably should go to the video just so you get the, you know, everything that was said, the nuance, the, you know, qualifications, et cetera. I, I think that uh, too much in the summary can lead somebody to a false conclusion. Fair point, so thank you for that. Um, I think what I'm in, uh, having heard all the different thoughts, I think what I, if, if no one objects, I'm gonna use a little bit of discretion as we go through and where are, there are just certain items that seem to call for a little more detail. And you know, we can just keep going, working on this. It's a work in progress. So um, other than the corrections that I've received so far, are there other corrections to the minutes? Not seeing any. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'm, I'm just going to do Solomon moved. We're good. Solomon. And, yes. and, and was that Gurkhan? Did you second the motion? Did I hear I you? Second. I second the motion. Excellent. Just going to call the roll. Beeman. Aye. Busby. Aye. Jacobs. Aye. Neville. Aye. Um, Salomon. Aye. Sandino. Aye. Sufi. Aye. Great. So the minutes are approved. Uh, the second item on the consent calendar is the legal memo that Kelly had referenced at last meeting. Um, really here we can either take no action at all or we can make a motion to accept the memo. Um, it's really Move providing- We accept the uh, memo as written. Okay. And is there a second to that motion? I'll go in second. Sufi. Good by Sufi and I'll call the roll. And obviously if you ever have questions about it or need clarification, I'm sure that you could submit them to Kelly Stackwood and she would further them to Inder. But obviously Inder is not here tonight for to respond. Um, Ezra? Is this a vote? Yeah, we're just voting to accept the, the uh, memo, that's all. It's just kind of our way of formally acknowledging that we received it. Oh, okay, yeah, aye. Uh, Busby? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Neville? Aye. <laughs> I don't know why I was pausing. Salomon? Aye. <laughs> Sandino? Aye. And Sufi? Aye. Very good. We are through the consent calendar. So let's turn to our regular items. And I'm just going to mention one thing here. We, we have a really a pretty light agenda tonight. We really just have um, this item where we need to plan 
have a discussion on how we want to undertake our review of the upcoming budget. But before we get into that, I just want to urge you to save just a little bit of your energy for the end of the meeting when we talk about the long range calendar, because there's a few different things I want to pick your brains on when we get to that item. So the, the reason for putting this item here on our meeting, our discussion tonight is that, you know, one of the real values that we can add as a commission is some input to city council as it undertakes its review and adoption of the, the um, budget. Um, just for those of us who, are, who haven't been on this commission a really long time and to give you just a little bit of background on how it's been done in the past, um, what happens is that the budget is proposed uh, by staff to city council mid-May on or after May 15, and the council formally adopts the budget by the end of June. So there's this really limited sort of six week window within which the council considers the budget, makes any modifications, works with staff, you know, and, and acts on the budget. Obviously we would normally only have one regular meeting in that time frame, and that doesn't really allow for us to be particularly helpful. And in fact, that meeting often comes a little too late in June to be really useful. So, what has happened in the past, and it's been done different ways in different years, but often our commission has scheduled an additional meeting sometime very shortly after the May 15 proposed budget between that then and when we would normally meet in June. So we try to get in there really quickly on the heels of the budget being proposed so that we, and, and at that point, we sort of have to act very quickly because we would have already individually done some review and some careful looking at the budget and would then be prepared to come to that right additional meeting with some either some questions about what's proposed in the budget because that's that's actually a really helpful uh, way in which we are helpful is simply by asking questions about why something's proposed in the budget or in some cases we make particular recommendations that say that an item not be funded in this fiscal year. And, and but we can talk as we go through our item about why we would make that kind of recommendation. Um, so our purpose tonight is just to kind of talk about how do we want to go about it this year? Do we want to have that additional regular meeting? And what approach do we want to take? And you probably saw that you received an additional document today it was a, a short memo that uh, Paul Jacobs put together, a proposal for how he thought we could approach our review. Did everyone receive that when it was sent out by staff? Okay. Paul, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I sort of want to hear a little bit from you about your proposal. And also, and I'm going to take, I won't forget public comment, Elena. I just want to hear a little bit more. I want to hear from Paul and also from some of the other commissioners who've been here a little bit, a little while about what you've done in the past, what's worked well in your review of the budget. I'd like to hear more from you because I'm a relative newcomer to this commission. So Paul, can you tell us a little bit about your proposal and how you think it would work? Excuse me. What, what I proposed in part was a response to the fact that we've eliminated our standing subcommittees. But I think the organization of the subcommittees was built around the budget. And it seems to me that some form of this is worth continuing because it allows a couple of us, two or three of us, to really pour over part of the budget in much more detail and raise new questions or make suggestions or for additions or subtractions or whatever. And uh, it, it and the second part of it is that if we were organized early, I think we might have a chance. I mean, it, I know staff is overwhelmed these days and there are furloughs and so on, but if we could meet with people in the city in advance of the budget, we could get some sense of what they feel their needs are, where they don't have enough resources, where what their priorities are, um, and really get to know the, both the staff and the, their, their fiscal needs better 
than we can in these sort of more general reviews we get when city staff comes be uh, department staff comes before the commission. So I would hope to me, it's like uh, uh, being a beat reporter. You can spend some time in advance of a story, just getting to know people and, and getting a sense of what their needs are uh, ahead of time. So you can really bore in on how, whether the budget really fulfills what it ought to in terms of the objectives. And that's, that's all I have to say. And I laid out these particular committees, commissions, and I know that uh, subcommittees, and I know you might have some other ideas and that's fine. But I think if we organized in some way around the budget document itself uh, for sub ad hoc subcommittees, I think it would be helpful. Okay. So yeah, no, that's really helpful. And I, I went back to, and I, I was looking at how the budget is presented and, and those subcommittees do align pretty closely with um, the presentation in the budget. So you're, what I didn't realize too from your, your memo is the idea that these subcommittees, assuming we reform them, would actually attempt to meet with the department heads or whomever pretty early, even before May, just to see what's gonna be coming down the line in the budget is that that's kind of what you're thinking not not waiting until the budget's proposed and then sort of meeting with them to try to better understand why they asked for what they asked for. Yeah, you know, and that's the idea. I know okay. several of the subcommittees have met with staff and may fit the under the old system, the old committee structure, and they may not, they may not feel they need to do this, but uh, it just seems to me it's a good idea to to check in regularly if we can do it uh, and not be a real burden to the city staff, I think it would be really helpful. Um, other commissioner thoughts, and I know Ray, you've been on the commission for a long time. Are there, can you speak to anything in the past reviews of the budget that's been, that's worked well or not worked well, or what's your, what are your thoughts? The, I think that there's a lot of merit in Paul's idea. Uh, I think realistically, by the time the budget gets to us, our opportunities are more around the edges. It's really too late to do anything major. Uh, you know, not to say we can't uh, do a look through and ask some questions. And I think that where I believe we've helped council is by looking at the budget and developing a list of questions and you know things that a logical person would ask. When I interviewed for the commission, the job was described as doing what the council would do if only they had time, you know, given that they address the confluence of you know, probably a dozen or more commissions versus just finance. So we do the heavier lifting for them. So I think a Q&A session would, uh, might prove helpful. So in the past, when you've written those questions, and I've, I've also seen that in the past, and, and Council Member Carson had provided me with a list of questions. So did you assemble those together as a full commission or did the different subcommittees kind of work up questions on their respective areas and bring them to the commission? Over the years, it worked two or three different ways. Okay. One week, yeah, basically just everybody read theirs at the meeting. In other uh, cases, we've uh, each submitted our own questions. And then I think if I'm not, and Councilman Carson might remember, I think somebody went through and eliminated the duplicates. Hmm. Uh, and uh, so both ways, I think it's probably more efficient from the standpoint of timing to submit them in advance, but the other can work as well. When you say in advance, you mean in advance of, of what? The advance of the meeting, in other words, okay, to, um, yeah, okay, to staff. Yeah, no questioning why the police expenditure for 
gasoline increased by you know 47 percent I'm, I'm i'm throwing out a completely random example which i don't think will be there but a 50 percent increase in the in gasoline when fuel prices have been relatively stable and staffing was described as lower okay. that would be the kind of question that we would reasonably ask okay, okay. um other commissioner thoughts questions I have to admit, I, I come from a world where this process, you know, at the state level, it's so prescribed. And there are even entities who do nothing but that independent review of, of the budget, of course, as Council Member Carson well knows. So, you know, I'm just trying to think of the best way for us to do it here at this at the local level. Other commissioner thoughts about how to do this? I would also ask the council members what they might view as particularly valuable for this commission relative to their review of the budget. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And I'm happy to turn to them and ask them. I know I did have a conversation with council member Carson about it a little bit. David, you have a question, comment? I do. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to sort this out because I think last, uh, last month we tried to, uh, we abolished some of these subcommittees and Looks like we're reconsidering doing it. Is is the difference that what we're proposing now they're they're ad hoc, meaning they only last for a few months? Yeah, it would be if we were to do Paul's proposal, they would be ad hoc for the purpose of providing review and comment on the budget. Okay. Councilmember Carson or or Chapman, did you want to add any perspective here on what you think would be most efficient or useful? I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, just a few, very few points. Um, and I think I've mentioned this at a past meeting. To the extent that you get those questions down in writing, um, uh, to the extent that you have specific comments you wish to make and you get them down in writing um, early in the process to share with all of the council members. And it isn't that that Councilman Chapman and I aren't going to listen carefully and closely to the discussion that will occur here um, in May or June, but um, to translate that into information that goes to all five council members, I think is very important. Um, uh, the, there's no one right way to do this. Um, uh, at times, we had a process like this of divvying up the different areas, but we had someone take a stab at a first stab at a memo, you know, weighing in at least on a few major issues um, that people could review. Um, the um, uh, but the timeliness of any any information or questions you have to provide um, is is very important to this process. And then just one thing, looking at Paul's list, one that I would call out, especially um, maybe it fits with the uh, effort you have to look at fund balance, debt, and revenues. The, the financial forecast chapter of the budget in recent years has become a really important part of that budget document. And um, that's probably a logical fit there with, with whoever is looking at those other matters. But I, I think that's an important one for, for this commission to scrutinize. Other commissioner comments or thoughts? And I can't see everybody. Let me make sure. I don't know why I'm having trouble seeing everyone. Let me try. I, this is Commissioner Sufi. I do support Paul's, um, Paul's recommendation. I like how we can come into each of the ad hoc subcommittees, um, have our questions, have our have a goal and then bring those forward and then be done with that ad hoc subcommittee. And then mm -hmm. we can come back to a new ad hoc subcommittee for another uh, purpose. So I, I really do agree with that. Yeah, I think the, the subcommittees can help because trying to really review the full budgets is a big undertaking. I, wanna, I wanted to ask a question though, and maybe it's most appropriate for staff. And so I, I appreciate the value of, of uh, us as commissioners coming up with 
questions about what's in the budget. And they could be questions along the lines of, you know, is this, is this proposed item, is it adequately justified? Is it really needed to given the current fiscal climate? You know, there's all kinds of questions that we could ask, or why are we buying this when we have this or whatever. One of the just, I'm putting on kind of my staff hat here is, sometimes those long, long list of questions, some of those questions could be just quickly disposed of with a quick answer and, and yet to really answer them in writing takes a lot of staff time. So I just, I just wanna ask if, if in the past, the, the sort of that's been a burden for staff to have to respond to those questions in writing. And I don't know if Elena knows that because she hasn't been here through a budget cycle, but I just wanna pose that question. I certainly see the value of the question. I just wanna make sure that whatever process we're using isn't creating a lot of burden on staff or isn't being duplicative of other written analysis they've already done somewhere. Donna, I, um, you're right. I can't really speak for it just because I haven't been here through um, that process. Um, I would like to maybe ask Karen to see if she's been here long enough for that. Otherwise, we haven't had staff here long enough to be through a budget cycle. So a lot of uh, staff and finance is actually new. So I'm going to ask Karen to see if she can answer it. But if not, then we're really just going to experience it for the first time. I will concur with Elena and say I'm relatively new too. I went through my first budget cycle last year. So I think this is something we're going to have to all navigate together. Okay. Ray, you have a question or comment? Comment is, while it would be great, you know, for example, you know, why did the fuel budget triple question would get an off the cuff answer. I can understand why staff has always been reticent to do that because the budget is often accompanied by significant public comment. And I think there is a concern that an off the cuff answer that may answer 80% of the question might not be fully accurate and omit something and you know could create ongoing issues. So I'm sympathetic to both sides of that one. I would love to have, quote, the elevator speech answer, but I'm also sensitive to the desire not to do the quick and dirty when the dirty part of it may come back to uh, dirty you. Yeah, no, it's a fair point. So Elena, in the world of, of the, the city budget process, do my understanding is so the different department heads put together their proposed budgets. Those go through different levels of review. Um, I'm assuming it, you know, obviously goes up to the city manager at some point for his, his review. And what I don't know, because I've never actually seen what those documents look like, is do they have a detailed analysis that supports, um, particularly when there's any kind of augmentation to a budget or any kind of a new item of appropriation, is there detailed analysis that supports the need for that? Um, well, the process is going to be uh, generally that we start with a baseline budget and then distribute that to all the departments. And um, we um, request from the departments to kind of do an analysis and tell us what are some of their needs may be but those needs are really done in communication with the city manager. So there's no deep detailed analysis as to what and why. Um, however, if they do have requests, they do need to, I guess, um, explain to the city manager and to finance um, as to why the need for those particular augmenta augmentations is now the city manager is the first look at um, those requests and not all of them particularly in the current situation i would assume would be uh, considered and so um, i'm not sure to what level of detail you may be looking at because if those are not proposed to even go to council it's not something that 
would be probably um, brought in into just a session to say mm -hmm. this is the need. Right. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to get a feel for what already exists in writing that would potentially answer some of our questions. So that's helpful. Um, before we kind of get down to just what we want to do, I want to see if there's any public, I'm not seeing other commissioners hands. I want to make sure I'm seeing everything here. I want to know if there's any public comment on this item. Um, well, those that might want to speak, please raise your hand or if you're on the phone, press star nine. And I see no one, Donna. Okay, thank you. So, so members, what would you like to do? I'm, I'll just throw this out there. I, I like Paul's idea that we sort of reform those committees as ad hoc committees. Um, and I think that I hadn't thought about this until he described it, but the idea that the sooner you get to work, um, if you have the option of meeting with the various department heads, just to have a conversation with them about what they're going to be asking for in this year's budget, you know, what's different, what's new, what's important for them, that would probably help a lot. Um, and then when, when the budget is proposed, I would suggest that it would make sense then for us to try to, to have that additional meeting scheduled so that the subcommittees could come forward at that meeting with the questions that they've developed. That would be sort of my proposal based on what we've heard here tonight. Um, other thoughts or directions folks want to take? Um, question. So will the department heads be, um, I expect they, they won't be enthusiastic about the prospect of having a meeting with members of the budget finance and budget commission. Is there any, um, you know, just because, you know, it's additional time and, you know, resources and that sort of thing. Is there any, concern, I guess, that, that staff will be, you know, reluctant or resistant to, you know, again, to schedule an, another meeting during their week to meet with members of the Finance and Budget Committee. Elena, do you want to answer that or do you want me to? Uh, well, I can try. I can certainly cannot speak for the rest of the department heads. Um, I think the uh, difficult part that I think I came across really trying to schedule certain meetings with um, the members of the commission is the scheduling. Um, the further in advance we do it, the easier it happens. Um, otherwise the schedules get to be um, filled on the city side or in this case, commissioner's side. So um, that's more of a concern, especially if you have more people included in it, in the meeting. So um, if that's how you will choose to proceed, then you know obviously we'll need to make time and um, be able to speak to what is in their budget or what they, I guess, asked for each department, but um, I think it's going to be more of towards the time when the busy budget schedule is. So um, it really is going to depend more on the scheduling. And Doug, also, yeah. thank, thank you, Elena. And I'd say too, Doug, that it's, in my, in my experience too, having these meetings with staff can be incredibly helpful. And, but I guess I would say in the context of this process, given the limited time frame, yes, it's a nice to have, a very nice to have meeting, but if, you, if your subcommittee really couldn't get that meeting together, then in, short of that, you would still develop your set of questions to bring forward to this commission. But I think it's a, a good step to propose as a goal. Other commissioner thoughts? Question, David. David, you are muted. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the city or, or chart well enough for each one of these potential subcommittees and how they would oversight over the over the city. But uh, for uh, fire and police, they have a budget staff person. So I'm just wondering um, to address Doug's question that the, the, the meeting doesn't necessarily have to be with the department head. I think the, the budget staff person who's most knowledgeable and Elena could recommend those folks, that would be uh, probably an easier meeting to have and it would be just as informative. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, absolutely. So commissioners, further thoughts, 
Anyone care to make a motion on uh, how we want to approach this? One last uh, one last question is um, what, what uh, Council Member Carson had mentioned that we need we uh, we're one of the areas that we should address as a with a subcommittee. Which which one would was that, and which group would that fall under again? Yeah, so he had he had said that what and we we should talk about this too if we decide to go with this. So that would have been the prior uh, fund balance revenue and debt subcommittee, which was um, Ray Gakern and me. That Dan said, excuse me, Councilmember Carson said would be best suited to look at the financial forecast portion of the budget. And, and I'm glad he mentioned that because when I looked at Paul's list of the subcommittees, I wasn't quite sure where that, where I would have tied that to in the budget because it seemed to be built into every department. So <clears throat> when in Paul's proposal, he has public safety and that's clearly identified it as a subject matter area in the budget as fire and police. He has parks and community services, public works and capital improvement. and those three areas are clearly identified in, in sections of the budget using virtually identical wording. And then he has in his list, admin information and communications. That doesn't quite tie to the budget, but it would tie to the beginning part of the budget that deals with um, the city, <clears throat> excuse me, city attorney, city manager and admin costs. And then fund balance, debt and revenue would be tied to financial forecast section of the budget and then community development would be community development. So that's one, two, three, four, five subcommittees. They don't necessarily need, if we are to reform them as ad hoc committees, they don't necessarily have to be made up of the same people who used to be on those subcommittees. We can, is there a general sense that people think that this approach would be useful? That's kind of, can people kind of do a thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing? Do you think it's generally a useful approach to reform these ad hoc subcommittees? Anyone doing thumb up? Everyone's, that seems to be a, a uniform. So maybe we could talk just a little bit if we're gonna go that way as to who should make up the public safety. So historically that was, David, that was you and Ray. Do you still wanna be the two who do that if we reform that or do are others interested in that work as well? Or are you not interested in that? I'm happy to be on it. I'm happy to be on any one of the uh, commissions uh, sub subcommittees. So it, th this would be a good one. But if others want to do it, I'll try another one. Great. No, I think it's great to have you on for a continuity. And, and so, yeah. Ray, you okay with that too? Absolutely. That'd be great. That seems to make a lot of sense. So parks and community services, public works and capital improvement. That's kind of a big one. So would, would that be, would that have been Forgive me, am I misremembering that would be Ezra, Doug, and Gakern? Is that sort of aligned with your old group? Uh, Michelle was oh. on there, I believe, uh, with Gakern. Oh. Michelle, okay. Ezra, and I. Okay, so Ezra, Gakern. Okay, interesting. Okay. And then, because that's a big, big area. Um, it's a big area that we've had not a lot of traction and we're told that they were too busy to meet with us. Um, I mean, the other thing I would put on here, I'm, I'm happy for, of course, anybody to, to, uh, um, to, to tackle the, the budget. Um, and I think the proposed approach um, has a lot of merit and that people will be attack, you know, tasked with different sections. Um, I've got enough on my plate with what I've already committed to. Um, and I find the, the the challenges with with engagement and the challenges with the numbers to make it very challenging. Um, okay, so Ezra, it sounds like you would not want to be on that one. That's fair. I just I want just, to see who's yeah. It's yeah. That, it's a big chunk. It really is, and I'm looking at it. Um, I mean, I have some background in public works and capital projects. I don't. Um, I can volunteer to work with Kern on that, but I'd like a third person. Is there someone else who? Well, I, I would recommend that the um, the community development budget. Just looking at the um, budget in brief that we got uh, that we saw earlier today, 
community development is a pretty small piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, parks, community services, public works, that, that's a big piece. Yeah. So I would actually recommend that we do not have a subcommittee looking at the community development budget. Okay. I mean, okay. Inter oh, good. just not because it's, it's not not that important in, in terms of the you know total numbers. Okay. No, I, I did look at the numbers a little bit and that's unless others, Paul, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I, it seems to me, I'm happy combining it with something else, but it seems to me community development is going to be pretty important because of the general plan. Um, and I don't know how that's budgeted. I have no, I mean, I know they spend a lot of money on it and it's a very detailed, elaborate process but we might want to throw that in with um, administration, information, and communications, um, or something. Uh, okay. Okay, that's a thought. That's a good thought. Okay, so let's. Okay, so let's go back up for just for a second to parks and community services, public works, capital improvement, and we have Gakern and me. Doug, is there any way you'd help us with that? Yeah, of a, course. Yeah, that's a big one. So that would be great. And then if we were to do admin information which and communications, which is really the city manager's office and combine it with community development. Um, Paul, are you up for that? Yeah, I'm still well, I'm more than happy to do that. Anybody wanna work with Paul on that? Are you, you're a lone soldier? Paul, did you have a thought? Your hand is up. I didn't have a thought, but it'd be nice to have two people. And yeah. Donna, you were you were working on some communications things of late. Sure, so. I'll, I'll I'll just overextend myself here. I'll volunteer to help you on that. And then the fund balance, debt revenues. If it translates into the financial forecast, I know you're really busy, Ezra, but that kind of has your name on it. Look, I'm I'm of course happy to to help. So, um, are you good with maybe just looking at that piece? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anybody else want to do that tag team with him on that or not? I would also volunteer, you know, yeah. have some uh, carryover knowledge from our prior work on fund balance. Yes, perfect. And I was so, going to say that Ray has to do that. It's yeah, a requirement yeah. because yeah. he's very good at picking out things that are possible ways to make money or save money. <laughs> so that, that, that looks good. Have I overlooked anyone? Paul, you have your hand up still. Did you? No, no I took it down. I was going to comment on that to make okay. sure Ray volunteered. <laughs> okay. So, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to just ask Elena if you could um, work internally with the calendar to see if you can find a date for an additional meeting for this commission after the proposed budget comes out between then and when our June meeting would be. So basically a meeting that would be in time for us to provide useful comments and feedback to city council. And I think in the past, we've tried to, if I'm remembering, we tried to squeeze it right in before the federal Memorial Day holiday, somewhere in there. It's my memory. If you can look for a date for that. Yeah. We'll and do, then, we'll, we'll survey of everybody. Thank you. And then does any, I can make them, I can attempt to cobble this together into a motion, but if someone else feels even more artful than I am, anyone want to make a motion? Okay, I'll, I'm going to try to make this motion. So the motion that I would make is that the commission form various ad hoc committees for the purpose of reviewing and analyzing the budget and providing feedback to city staff and to city council in a timely fashion. The subcommittees will be as follows. Public safety will be David Sandino and Ray Solomon. Parks and community services, public works and capital improvement will be Gakern Sufi, Donna Neville and Doug Busby. Admin, information and communications and community development will be Paul Jacobs and Donna Neville. Fund balance, debt revenue, which really translates into financial forecasting section of the budget will be Ezra Beeman and Ray Salomon. 
to the extent possible, these subcommittees will meet with the appropriate city staff before presenting their, their questions and concerns to the full commission. Ray, go ahead. Ray has friendly amendment. The commission further uh, empowers the chair to form additional subcommittees and appoint members as she believes appropriate. In other words, if we run into something, you can just do it. I don't know if I can. I, I don't know if that goes beyond my, my authority. I, I think my understanding is that the chair can appoint subcommittees. I may be wrong. Even on my own outside of a meeting. I just I just don't know. Um, uh, it's been done before. Whether we should have done it or not is perhaps an open question, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. You can certainly put it into the motion. And if someone tells me I shouldn't or can't do that, I certainly will. Paul, go ahead. Oh, I like that idea. And I think in the past. <laughs> You're so rogue. Mich Michelle has done. Michelle had done something similar, I think, in the past, informally or and including it in this, giving you actual, the permission to do it is, I think, uh, a, a wise idea. So we can, I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. That's fine. Is there um, a second to the motion? I'll second that as amended. That was Doug. Any further debate yep. on the motion? Is there any debate on the motion? Need to check for comments to them. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that I had asked for public comment earlier in the item before we got to this part of the discussion. But please, yes, is there any public comment? Um, well, I don't see any. I think you've mentioned that you were going to come back to it, but no, no public comment. Thank you for reminding me. All right. So I'm going to call the roll. Um, Ezra? Ezra, I think maybe you're muted. Am I still muted? Nope, I can hear you now. Sorry, aye. Doug? Aye. Paul? Aye. Donna, aye. Uh, Ray? Aye. Sandino? David Sandino? Aye. And Gurkern? Aye. Great, great. So we've got a process. And so hopefully we'll be able to make a good contribution. So um, just moving quickly here, we have, um, Doug, and I just put this on here for you to give us an update on the most recent housing element subcommittee meeting. I don't know if you actually need to do an update, but please feel free to go ahead and nope. nothing, no nothing update. To we, we, we have not scheduled. We're waiting on the um, on staff to schedule our what would be our fourth and final meeting oh. to actually review the draft um, housing element. Gotcha. Uh, so the storm canceled you. I thought, you were, me? I thought you were supposed to meet, but then the storm hit. No, no, no. We oh. um, The last meeting we had was in early January, which was originally would have been our last meeting, okay. but um, staff had not ha had the opportunity to complete a draft of the actual housing element. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the commission requested that we be brought back to actually review the, the draft once it was completed. We we anticipate that that will happen potentially in March. Um, so, but that hasn't been scheduled yet. Got it, perfect. Okay, thank you. Now I know where we are on that. Um, and I'm, I'll just ask just to <laughs> stick to form, but is there any public comment on that? No public comment. Great. So now we're turning to commission and staff uh, communication subcommittee reports. And we'll just run through them. I know some of you may have a status update and I think David, I don't think you have a status update on yours, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and Ray, I'm just gonna turn to you um, to give an update on, on our subcommittees. Yeah, we had a, an excellent meeting with Adrienne and Stan from uh, Public Works, uh, Elena and Kelly, as well as our entire subcommittee relative to the idea of spending some of the excess cash 
in the enterprise funds. We focused on the water fund and staff is looking at uh, firstly the option of paying down or even paying off the bonds specific to the water fund. These are described in uh, note 16 to the CAFR if anybody's interested in exactly what we're talking about. And then secondly, uh, they're also looking at the idea of using the funds to pay off or pay down OPEB liability firstly, uh, then possibly pension. The advantage of doing OPEB is that there needs to be an actuarial study regardless. So the actuarial question could be resolved during the study without incurring significant incremental cost, which I thought was a very good observation. And it looks like we have a clear direction to move forward. Uh, staff suggested they might be back the meeting after next to, to discuss progress on this. Great, great. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, it was, it was really a good meeting. And I think we all came away feeling like we could refine our recommendation and, and it would make what we ultimately present, I think will be even better. Um, so on um, the next one on the subcommittee related to economic impact of major development, and I know Ezra and Doug and Gakern, you've been continuing to work on this, but you, did you wanna give us a brief status update tonight on just where you're at with your progress or what you're thinking? Uh, it, so we've reviewed it as a team. Um, we've identified the additional uh, work that we wanna focus on to um, make everybody on the team comfortable. Um, I've just been over, we've had a post COVID recovery in my sector uh, or what it looks like. So I've been swamped and not able to move it forward. Um, so I just, as soon as I get myself unburied, um, I can address the task force concern and then I'll be reaching out to staff and commission reps uh, to go over it with them uh, and make sure everybody's comfortable uh, before bringing it back. Great. And then I know also another thing that you're, you're also looking at is this notion of um, what you've heard, referred to as local content preferences, which we understand to mean, you know, can you have a preference that the city uh, contracts to buy its certain goods or services locally? How's your, what's your status of your work on that? Uh, is it the same? And that's fine. I just, just so I know where you're at with things. Yep, so we have a draft of the memo there. Um, I, I got feedback from the other task force members and it's, um, Somehow I keep getting all the actions, um, but at least I've got I've got feedback and it's mm -hmm. now with me. Great. Mm -hmm. I think we were supposed to create an ad hoc subcommittee for that during this meeting, actually. Well, we... what we did in our last meeting, at first I thought that, that, but then I sort of exercised the prerogative of the chair and I felt that that work could probably fall under your existing umbrella okay. of your ad hoc. So I think, I think that you're good. You're kind of doing it under that. Just for the record, that's an example where I uh, thought that notes would <laughs> have captured what happened. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I tried to capture it in the in the minutes, but I yeah, yeah, I know there was a little confusion around that. I know. It went all good. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. And then the subcommittee related to communications. I don't know, Paul, if you want to say anything. Um, I just want to say very briefly that uh, the. Michelle and I were working to come up with a proposal for a utility insert that would talk about the pavement plan, since there continues to be interest by the public and in the enterprise about uh, potholes and deteriorating streets and so on. And the council actually took some action on this after a, a a committee was formed that included Michelle. And we've actually done a, a, a draft, sent it to staff, sent it to, uh, sent it around to, uh, for a utility insert. Now, I consider anything we draft as certainly not at all binding, but hopefully it will stimulate actually producing something. Because I think people from time to time in letters to the editor and uh, next door have complained about the condition of streets. It's no secret that the streets are in 
pretty bad shape and the bike paths aren't a whole lot better, although there are some improvements on university property that are going on. But um, uh, in any case, I, I don't know where it's going or how quickly it'll come. There was some talk about it being done in the, in the, in the utility bill, being sent out in the utility bills in February. I don't know if it'll be ready in time. But we've sub I've submitted and I asked Donna to look at it, uh, some ideas for it, uh, pretty detailed, and we'll see where it goes. I, I, I think it's a good idea to get that out there, that the city is aware that this is a big problem, that, it's, uh, that they've hired consultants that show how bad it is, <laughs> and that there is a plan in place that we've reviewed as a commission that going forward that uh, we'll try to fix the problem or at least greatly improve con road conditions and do it in a financially smart kind of way. Great. Great, thanks Paul. And that reminds me too of something that I will probably continue to emphasize as we get closer and closer to the budget, which is that um, the council is committed to this 10 year plan for improving the, the bike paths and roadways. And so one of the lenses that we need to put on as we're going through our review of the budget is to look to see whether that commitment is being honored in this budget this year. And we can talk about that more specifically as, as time moves forward. Um, good, so, um, and, and no public, I assume there's no public comment on these subcommittee reports, Elena? Um, no public comment. Great. So we'll move to our final item. And I did tell you, I did warn you, we need to save just a little bit of energy for this. So for our long range calendar, I just want to talk a little bit here. Um, you know, we've, we've done a, a number of things over the past year in terms of having like different department heads come and speak to us, provide us with information. One of the items I just want to mention, and, and I need some feedback from you all on, is that at our March meeting, we are tentatively scheduled to have Matt Dulcich from UC Davis come and speak to us. And this is gonna really test some people's memories because this goes back, I know Gakern is smiling because this is literally going back a year ago, almost a year ago in our March, 2020 meeting, we had a discussion about having him come and speak to us about UC Davis and its growth plan um, and Michelle and Paul, I think Paul, did you and Michelle work the questions up together or do we do it as a full commission, but we sent a series, we compiled a series of questions that we were hoping he would come and address when he spoke to us. Paul, are you talking? I think it was a full commission. Full commission. I, I don't think she and I did it specifically, but I know she, I think she assembled a, a series of questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And I think given COVID and right. the changes that are, that the university, the university's response to that will affect this, their long range forecast and its impact on the city would be, I think it'd be really timely to have him come. Yeah, so he's tentatively scheduled and I don't know if Kelly has had an opportunity. She, Kelly was gonna reach out to him and see whether he is actually able and willing to come in March. That's when we had him on our tentative calendar. And Kelly's Kelly's not here tonight, right, Elena? I don't see her. No, I did not see her on the on the um, attendees list. Thank you. I'll follow up with her. Um, go ahead, Ray. Ray, you're muted. So Ray, you're muted. If uh, he can't do it in March, I would suggest pushing it all the way to July because that way the incoming commissioners would have the benefit of his background, et cetera. I mean, while I certainly attend via Zoom regardless, you yeah. know, presenting yeah. to me doesn't do very much in my remaining you know, three meetings. No, it's a good point. And, and Kelly was not particularly hopeful he was going to be able to, to do it on this notice. So she's going to reach out and see. So um, 
but it, it sounds like there's generally, and I'm hearing, and I know Ezra, you looked at it too. And we all, I think we all thought there was some value in having him come and talk to us, but it's a question of whether he's going to be able to in March. So that's on the calendar. Um, I want to make sure that I do hear from you. I want to make sure I keep a record of things that we talk about that people ask to have on future agendas and that we do talk about them. And, and you know, those that kind of come to the top of the pile, I, I need to get working on. I want to run through a few things here. Um, the, in the long range calendar in our in your agenda, you'll see that I have listed a workshop on development impact fees. And I want to talk about what this means a little bit because it's not something that we as a full commission have talked about. We have talked a lot in the context of the subcommittee's work on major um, development impacts. We've talked about economic development impact fees, but I've realized that I need to learn a lot more about them before I could provide anything very useful to city council on them. And one of the ideas that I've been playing around with is this idea of putting together some kind of a workshop where we bring in some of the experts, people who really do understand the legal and economic framework for development impact fees, um, bring in folks who have practical experience at, at perhaps different cities or a representative of a city organization uh, and developers you know, who have a perspective on them. I'd like to get more schooled in, in the whole concept of development impact fees. So I'm really interested in trying to put together a workshop I realize bringing everybody like that together would probably mean that we should be having a meeting that isn't just our commission. It might be a joint meeting with the planning commission and others, but I just wanted to throw this idea out there. Um, I don't want to, by proposing it, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into anything the subcommittee is working on, but I just think it would be really valuable to have an informational forum or a workshop on this concept. I want to throw that idea. I think it's an excellent idea. I, I think it's an excellent idea. Sorry to cut you off. Any other thoughts or suggestions? I mean, obviously, it's going to take me some planning and some work to pull it, to get it together and figure out who all the experts are. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, great idea. So, so I think it's a good idea. Obviously, I proposed it, but I'll, I'll kind of keep playing around with it and try to come up with a, an agenda and some materials and work with, um, I'm gonna work with um, Council Member Carson and others to try to coordinate that. Um, another idea that's on here is this, um, uh, Paul, you proposed this because one of the city departments that hasn't come to speak to us is HR. And you thought there would be some value in having them come. You wanna to speak to that issue a little bit about your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh Michelle and I, as the administration subcommittee of days past, actually met with um, the head of uh, HR and found it really useful. This was a, a relatively new person. She's uh, very sharp, uh, pointed out some things the city should have, has, has put off doing and that they are now doing. Uh, I know that they were doing a study of relative wages within the city. And they've also talked about doing studies uh, of different classification. They call that a classification study. Uh, they've also done, uh, they've, they're doing more than they have in the past uh, in contract negotiations of comparing salaries of different jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And I, I I think it it would be helpful to hear from her because people are always, uh, when you read letters to the editor, people will complain about salaries and benefits and uh, obviously benefits have been changing over time. I'm not sure most of the public is aware of that in terms of the new kinds of pension obligations, the new pension alternatives. Um, anyway, I just think it would be interesting. I mean, for example, the city has used to have a cafeteria plan where if you didn't use all the extra benefits you had, you could take money. I don't know if they still do that. It'd be interesting to know that. Um, I work for a company that said at one point they announced that if your spouse was entitled to health benefits, then you, we weren't going to give your spouse health benefits. 
it's an interesting idea. And especially if you have these cafeteria plans, people were trans could translate that into money in their pocket and maybe the city could make some savings that way. I know these are all subject to labor negotiations. Right, right, yeah. Um, I think it would be useful. I think, yeah, I think you'd be impressed and uh, she might have some interesting things to talk about. Other commissioner thoughts on that? on that issue? I know we've had updates from a number of department heads, but that's not one of them. Ray? Yeah, I think it would be great. I would also suggest that we follow up on the organization study that was done by the former city manager. And uh, there were a lot of things identified at the time relative to span of control, et cetera that were said to be issues of uh, pragmatism. In other words, we simply had two supervisors. We did not want to demote one. So we had a one in three span of control, for example. And I think that would be a great thing to update as part of the overall HR discussion. Okay. 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 Um, all right. Other so another another issue, and I just want to I just want to make sure I'm capturing prior requests. So the other item I have listed here, and this Ray, this came from from our discussion at the last meeting, where we were discussing the subcommittee's proposal related to major economic economic impacts of major developments. And one of I don't know if I captured it quite right, but one of the themes that you were sort of teasing out was this what the fiscal impact that major development projects have on transportation. And you had made a request that it be on a, a future agenda. I don't even, I'm not certain I've even captured that quite right. So I wanna make sure that you tell me, you did make a request that something be on a future agenda. And if you wanna clarify that or tell me a little bit more about what you were looking at. So, and I will not claim to have any particular uh, insight into the Davis electorate but I've heard from many who are more informed than me that a major reason why Measure B failed was concerns about traffic. And as I look at the uh, analysis that was done for Measure B, it did not include the effects of traffic. And so what I had suggested as an amendment to uh, Ezra and his committee's work on the model is that future models look at it from the standpoint of the citizens of Davis, not just the city government. So in other words, if there is going to be more traffic, model the time wasted in traffic. And and I had suggested looking at the median income, that you could look at the median income, the traffic, et cetera. I'd also suggested you can further take a look at the cost of incremental vehicle operation if you're spending you know, an incremental two or three minutes at an intersection every day. And uh, again, what I suggested, not necessarily that we vote and do it right then, but I thought a reasonable topic. So let me, let me still think about that a little more just because of the interplay between that and the sequel process. So I, I want to go ahead, Paul, you have a, you have a comment. Yeah, I, I have two points. First, I don't think it's totally accurate that, and if you look at the environmental report, that it didn't take into account traffic. I know that Ray is raising another point, which is that you can somehow monetize the the time, extra time people would have to spend in traffic. And we can discuss that if you want to. I, 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 I think it's a difficult question and there are all kinds of issues, but I think I wanna, I think that the city did negotiate with a developer to take several steps to mitigate traffic concerns. Now, how adequate they are, I'm not prepared to say right now, but yeah, there were so, things like a shuttle bus to take people back and forth to downtown and the university that would be paid for, and if I remember right, paid for by the, uh, Dan will correct me if he's still online, 
that, that, that would be provided by the developer. Um, the, and there were other, they, they also had this sort of thing I'd never heard of before. It was called a TDA. Uh, I'm not even sure now what that stands for, where they would do surveys periodically to see what the transportation needs and pro issues were at that development to see what they could do to improve it. That might involve bus scheduling and so on. Right. So, I, I just so, want to set right. the record straight. I think there was some mitigation and it was addressed. And it, you're right, Ray, it is a big concern of people. People don't like the idea of not being able to get on the freeway and drive into Sacramento to work. Um, as one of the yep. people who used to do it. So yeah. let me, for Simple. now, that's kind of for now, because all we're trying to do is plan our long range agenda and not really. But I, I have no problem with bringing up. Yeah, let me kind of pause that. Can you monetize uh, the uh, traffic problems and yeah, whether that can. could or should be included? Um, yeah, let me, let me, let me think about that a little bit and look, do a little more research on it for, for now. And is there anything else though that I haven't captured that someone has requested be on an agenda? Cause I try to make sure I catch everything and if I'm missing something that someone's requested. So the one I had loosely suggested a couple of years ago is we try to identify the city or cities that are viewed as being the most transparent relative to budget information, financial information, et cetera. In other words, is it Arcata? Is it, you know, Yountville? And I just picked those two because they're an A and a Y. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that does a really good job that as we, especially as we move forward with an ERP, who would we like to be like? So that sounds like something um, that the communication subcommittee could take into account in its work, looking at that, those kinds of issues and doing research. So that's, that's a great reminder. Um, so we don't know yet if Matt Dulcich is really firm for March. And I also know just from some prior conversations, and I think with some of the subcommittees, Ezra and Gokern and, and Doug, it's not certain that you're gonna have a proposal in March yet. And that's fine, that's fine, everyone's busy. So I just want to kind of give people a heads up that if, if we don't really have a very firm and substantive agenda for March, it's possible we would decide not to have a meeting. Because from my perspective, if there's, if you don't have an agenda, things to really get done. You shouldn't be wasting staff time and your time. So I'm just giving everyone kind of a warning that there's some chance we won't have a March meeting, but I'll definitely keep you posted. You know, I'll coordinate with Kelly to see what the word is with Matt Dulcich, if he's coming. And if, if things if things change or if one of your subcommittees has something really substantive you want to bring forward, please do, you know, keep me apprised of that. And then I'll make sure we we have a meeting. Um, but that's, that's kind of all we have for tonight. Um, I, Elena, I know we, I need to ask for public comment on the long range calendar. Is there any public comment? We do not have any. No public comments. All righty. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move Solomon. And a second. Second Beeman. Beeman and I'll call the roll to adjourn. Um, Ezra Beeman. Uh, I. Jed Busby? Aye. Paul Jacobs? Aye. Donna Neville, aye. Ray Solomon? Aye. David Sandino? Aye. Kukern Sufi? Aye. Very good. Um, thank you, everyone, and good evening. And I'll keep you posted on whether we're meeting next month. Good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Time for dinner. <laughs>